hello, actually, hello. I'll need to start it again. Okay, now we're recording. Oh, was my intro not good enough? It wasn't recorded. Oh, okay, I lost okay. that magic. I lost that magic. Oh, man. <laughs> Do you know I know magic? I got to show you some tricks. Oh, yeah. I yes. blew Arthur's mind the other day with the coin trick. Oh. That was a reaction like a four-year-old boy. It was great. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm in Vegas, so I got to learn these things. Yes, you need a, a, a plan B in case this coaching thing doesn't yeah. uh, work out for it, you. Yeah, exactly. Plan B. You know what makes me mad is I've learned like these tricks. It's just always something I've always liked to do these little like tricks. Uh-huh. And uh, and Kimber pops them every time. Like she she picks them out every time, and she's like utterly unimpressed. And I'm like, <laughs> I like try to do these tricks. Arthur goes off the wall, but yeah, Kimber's like. She f- she figures them out every time. I don't understand. So I'm gonna try them on you. Anyway, it's super random, but but uh, <laughs> there's the intro. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, everyone. Thanks for joining us here today. Yes. Yes. As always, thank you for consuming our calorie free content. <laughs> It's great for prep, you it's know? It's great for prep. It's calorie-free. Calorie-free. Yes, just like artificial sweeteners. Yeah. Just like me, artificially sweetened. Now, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys like it, if you guys like my podcast, leave a comment. If you don't like it, it is Ashley's podcast. Yes. Leave a yes. comment. <laughs> you can come for me if that's the case. Come I'm sure they will. In the comment section. In the comment section. So today's podcast, Ashley, this is going to be your a lot about you and your current scenario which is really cool yeah. some first-hand experience mm-hmm. what are we talking about we're spilling all the secrets right now you know we're gonna send everyone an invoice <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if you haven't noticed i haven't been on stage in a whole like how long has it been oh my gosh, six weeks which is a no. long time for me that's like people's already forgotten who i am anymore <laughs> they forgot my name <laughs> you know, everything that I've ever accomplished, they forgot me because I've been off stage for, for six weeks. This is a, can we should talk about that being a legitimate fear of Ashley's. <laughs> That's, it's so funny. She's like the most, the mo, what is it called? The most awarded or most uh, accolades, whatever of all time. But then she'll be like, well, if I change my suit color, they might not remember who it's I am. true. <laughs> I always feel like so nervous when I switch up my suit color because I feel like, Will they recognize me? And do I have to start my career all over again? That, you know, it, it keeps me up at night sometimes. <laughs> but I've been this year way more willing to experiment with all my suit colors from Angel Competition bikinis. Yes. Use code Ashley Fit at checkout. Shout out to Angels. I know. They're, they're an the awesome best. company. I really I love, love them. I get nothing from saying that, but they are just an awesome company. Love them very much. So. Yeah, you know, they would sparkle up a, a jacket for you on the fly. Yeah, I think you I got, a, I got like that. three of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want one. I do want another. They have these purple ones. I want to grab one of these purple jackets. Oh, so yeah. I'm yeah. Get one of those. So, yeah, I've, I've been off stage for a hot minute there. Long for me because I'm uh, usually doing, doing at least one a month or sometimes two. But it's like so hard for me to watch these shows go down and I'm not in them. And the reason being is because I'm taking a little mini break. Yeah. Mini break. <laughs> and, and I don't want to say off season. I think we should phase out the word off season because yeah. we're not, ne- I'm never off. I don't know about you guys. I'm never off. I'm always on. Yeah. I'm not taking off. I'm on. So I maybe th- improvement season. I'd like the improvement season. You know what? I do think that the off season just. Improvement season. Improvement season. Yeah, the off-season name. I guess I should have <laughs> Okay, okay. The, uh, the off-season name, it kind of, it's kind of like the reverse diet name. So when reverse dieting came out first, everyone thought, okay, I just do my diet in reverse. So whatever weeks I cut my calories, I need to raise them in reverse, right? But that's not the right way to have a reverse diet. That's not the right way to do correction. So now we call it post-show diet or correctional diet. That's what we call it, at least. And then off season I think the same thing like people think oh I'm just off now yeah it's like an all or nothing mindset like all, when I'm on I'm on but yeah. when I'm off I'm off exactly and now we, I think I like that people are starting to call it improvement season and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah I do think but that's the thing with bodybuilding is it's bodybuilding is a lot of a good day just strung together with many many good days it's a succession of good days there's no off like you unfortunately there's just no time you can take off in bodybuilding if you want to be good it takes such a long time to build muscle and and it's just you can't have like just a period of just off I'm just off so I yeah I don't I don't like it you know so yeah yeah, you're the same you're the same way there are a there's like very few people who've ever been able to do that successfully like just take a ton of time off and come back and be good every year so anyway that being said with that being said yeah I'm uh 
I'm looking for my next show, which uh, might be sometime in late August or September. I'm definitely doing the Arnold Classic UK. That's a set in stone deal. My flights are booked. My contract sign and return. I'm on the list. It's O-Fish. That's an O-Fish show. But I might want to jump into one a little bit before that, just because the Arnold Classic UK is a huge show, as you know. Um, so it is nice to do a little tune-up show, I think, before. So we'll kind of see how that goes and see and see how I'm making my improvements and how, you know, how I'm looking from yeah. week to week. But I'm definitely keeping my eye out for maybe an, a show beforehand just because I tend to what, – what we've kind of discovered is usually what's the case is I usually look better at that second show if I'm doing them like a back-to-back kind of thing or – if it's like a two week in between situation, I usually look better the second show. So maybe even if I find one that's you know in September, a few weeks before, you know, yeah, we're keeping tune- my options open. It's a, a tune up show. We'll do it maybe a tune up show, but let's let's really call what is Ashley can't wait to get on stage. So any yeah. excuses she could come up with? Yeah, get, she's like, I just need this tune up show. I'm I just rationalizing need- <laughs> here. Yeah, I, just- I really am. You guys so. <laughs> You don't know. I I love competing so much. It's so hard for me to just not compete all the time. And I I have biggest FOMO when I see shows go down and I'm not in it. I'm like, oh, man, what if? What if I was there? I know. I knew the Chicago Pro hurt you this weekend. I was watching. Because I wanted to do that one. Yeah. I had made plans to do that one. I even booked my flights. But then the reason why, I guess, even backtrack a little bit, the reason why we're doing this is because I was told – from a judge like Ashley, you know, you got a lot of potential, but let's, you know, maybe take just a little time off to, to build a little bit more, yeah. just a little bit more. And I keep getting the same feedback over and over about these guns right here. You know, they need to be juicier. Yeah. I need to make these angel hairs into laguinis. I think, I think, um, I'm going to say what, I'm going to say what the judge said, because I think you're too modest to say what they actually said. It was actually and a lot worse. They actually said, <laughs> they, they said, Adam Ashley is in the mix for the Olympia. She's still in the mix to get the title back. And we would love to see her have the title back one day. But with her competing so much, we do think that that's probably hindering her getting the last bit of shoulder growth and the last bit of, of fullness up top that, that she would probably need to do that. So I think it'd be in her best interest to take off some time and to build up, because we would love to see her as competitive as possible at this year's Olympia, because she's definitely in the mix. That's that's what they said, and so we took that. It was from a uh, from a from a head judge, like as you know, from I mean, I don't think it's a problem saying what Tyler said it, which is you know the vice president. So um, you know, he was, gave us some very good feedback. Sandy agreed, and so um, you know, that's what we're doing. We're taking some time off, and we're we're you know, not a, I don't think she needs a lot of time off, and we're learning a lot about your physique during this time off mm-hmm. too which has been really cool to see. And I think people will see it. We're going to go over some of the stats, which you guys can look at and, um, and realize, okay, um, it's pretty cool to see like the data of it too yeah. and how you do it. And this is how we do it with pretty much everyone. So, um, mm-hmm. so, so anyone who does their, um, you know, does their check-ins like through the system, we track all the data. So measurements, weight, pictures, all that. And we'll go over some of that stuff with you today. But mm-hmm. how, have you, uh, how have you been doing it so far? So far, not as bad as I thought, but I do want to backtrack just slightly a bit here too. So not only was that the reason why I'm taking some time off, but there's the other few things as well that I think we should mention. Um, so I think I did briefly touch upon this like in a few podcasts ago, but you know, I did three shows in a row, right? Um, and when I did Toronto, even that was like my first of the three shows. I won that show, um, but I wasn't a hundred percent happy. And I know that sounds so strange. I won the show; I should be thrilled. And you know, I, I was grateful and I was, you know, happy that I won. However, the the Ashley versus Ashley part in my head was like, "That's not your best look," and it wasn't. If I'm being completely honest, I won, but it wasn't my best. I wasn't like thrilled. You know, because sometimes, like, I won't even win a show, but I will be thrilled because, like, that's my best look or I made some crazy improvements. But even Toronto, I was like, I won, but I 
no, I've seen myself a lot better before in the past, you know? Um, and then also when I did the next two shows, I got second in those, but I think out of those three shows, mile high, I looked the best, which was my second show. And then even then I wasn't my best either. Your but waistline, the before, the day before the show, that oh, where, waist, the, yeah. Yeah. So that's actually for the last show though, that when it really was apparent, I think, but, um, so the, you know, even mile high, it wasn't my best, but it was better than Toronto. So I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then the, the next week was Patriots. And that was probably like my worst show in a long time. The way I looked there, um, was not something I was super thrilled at. Um, and you know, this is just, I, as a competitor, you have to take a step back and really evaluate, you know, the pluses and minuses because every look's going to be a little different. You might be stronger in one area for one show and then the other show, not so much. But what I did notice, especially with the Patriots is I even, I would say even that few weeks, I had some weird bloating problems and I wouldn't say problems. It's not like I was in pain, but my my body just wasn't cooperating. Yeah. <laughs> and there's even this picture too, which I'll put it on my YouTube video version of this, but like I had weird like back fluff and it's like the strangest thing. Cause yeah, I would be lean. Yeah. It was like three days before you were shredded. Yeah. And, and then, then it would just like fluff up. And I'd get fluffy yeah. in my back, which I'm not, that's not usually a place I would get fluffy at. That's mm -hmm. like unlike me. And in general, my body just wasn't being cooperative. Like, and maybe it was because I was tired or just overdoing it. Sometimes my head gets is is two steps before my physique. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, I want to do what I'm going to do. I'm so motivated. And I was. It's just my body wasn't cooperating. And it was. And for me, I'm usually pretty consistent. Like I I bring in consistent looks, like without any problems usually. But these last three shows that I competed in, they were just kind of all over the place. Like you mentioned, like three days before show, I'd be like super tight and crispy, even to the point where even before Toronto, I was like, whoa, I'm too lean. I'm way too lean. And I, I think I actually was too lean at that point. And then carving up a little bit and then I looked fine. And then, you know, then I looked too fluffy and then it just, so it was like a roller coaster. My physique was like a. It was changing daily. Yeah. Lot, like, yeah. what are we going to get today? Like, who knows? And the softness didn't make sense either. Yeah. Because the calories weren't there enough to cause that. Yeah. Right? It was like, it looked like it was like three pounds of body fat or something. And we're like. And it was like all on my back. And, and I'm stomach. like, how, how is this even happening? Like, everything's the same. The calories haven't increased. Like, yeah. it doesn't make sense. And then the digestion was off. So one day would be a little wider in the waist. And then the next day would be good. And it was, I think it was the, if, maybe I'm mixing up the shows, but I thought it was the Bef the day before the mile high, your waist was still oh bloated. that one yes not on the mile high yeah day, yeah, but before, yeah 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 Sorry. in the in the room and I was like we yeah, had to like pray to the poop god <laughs> yeah they answered oh that's right I remember that wasn't the video that's right it was then and then yeah then the next morning you woke up we're like okay sweet it hit you know but yeah. I mean it was just it was all over the like, place so stressful to be like I don't know why I'm, I'm fluctuating this much I have no idea like, yeah. I think it's good for people to see that even yeah. someone who's as, as active as you as a competitor is going to have those things because, yeah. I mean, it happens all the time, guys. Like, there's just no way to have that perfect, like, to know for sure this is going to be the most perfect day. Like, we could set everything up perfectly, perfect peak week, not too stressful, all that, but then, you know, sometimes the body just won't cooperate. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you'll start your period, like, the day of the show. Like, it, things, weird things happen that are out of your control, so you can only, you know, even someone like Ashley can't always be that consistent you right. know I mean? it's just it's just hard so when it becomes more of an issue like a more con more consistent of an issue you know maybe some time a little bit of time a little bit of break yeah. might be helpful so. yeah yeah so that's you know what I was thinking when all else fails you know just maybe it's just a sign that my body just needs this little tiny itsy bitsy little break you know and who really knows what the cause of that was maybe it was stress because sometimes I'm very how do I explain this? I'm a very black and white person, right? So I don't get deep in my feelings. I'm like, go, 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 go. Adrenaline, adrenaline, go. You know what I mean? You're pretty, you know what, Ashley, you're pretty like old school tough chick. Yeah, I guess you so. Don't, you don't really realize it. I just, the more <laughs> I've been, I've been on you like five years, like consistently now. And uh, yeah, you're, you're like 
super it's it's kind of funny because you don't have the feels like yeah. that like you're just like a tough chick like yeah <laughs> well you know it helps sometimes and hurts in other places but you know i i guess if i'm being all emotional and stuff i sh maybe should just take a step back and be like why is my body not cooperating with me why is it this or is it that? I don't know. Maybe stress. Because like I said, I, I think I kind of mask that a lot. Because it's, I'm li like when I'm doing show to show like that, I'm like in a constant state of adrenaline. Like I'm just like, nothing matters. I got to go, go, go. Um, so that could be it. It also could be sleep because I am a horrible sleeper. That's what gets, I think that's sleeper. what gets to you the most. And like when you're, mentally too. Yeah. So my moods can very much like fluctuate. Like, you know, if I didn't get good sleep, if I'm like really quiet and like, cranky and like one word answers just like yes you know so <laughs> like you know and especially with that term. i can tell i was like a cry is coming soon cry, <laughs> sometimes coming yeah sometimes twice a year it like it's building up it's coming two, two times <laughs> of crying a year that's my limit um so i have not exceeded that th yet this year i think I've, I've only had one this year i think i was actually i think it was training with sam and i was so jet lagged and i think it was after toronto I was so jet lagged and tired. I just started crying for no reason just because I was just feeling miserable, you know. So that's another thing, too. Everything like, sounds like such a good idea until you go through it. You're exactly. Like, I'm going to do four shows in a row. I'll oh. do four in four weekends. <laughs> or like, yeah, yeah, it'll be perfect. And then, like, sh show two will be coming around. Yeah, and, like, and the thing the about travel, me. It's just the travel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the thing about me is I'm so, like, um, I don't procrastinate. So I like to send those contracts in ASAP. So it's like, <laughs> well, you know, my I'm not doing the best these last two shows, but I got to keep going. I just signed the contract. Don't want to let people down, you know? So – I'm very much a go, go, go person. And sometimes I need to remind myself, just chill out for a little bit. Just whew, chill out. Chill out, Ashley. So I, like I said, maybe that was a reason. Maybe not. Maybe my body was just just saying F you. I don't know. I don't know. We'll never know. No. But uh, that's why we're taking this little mini break, too, in addition to having to build these guns. Yeah, so it, <laughs> now we've posted. And if you guys haven't seen yet, you know, you can watch it if you'd like. Um, we posted what she's doing for her workouts right now, too. Yes. We put it on YouTube. Still doing them. And it is super high volume. We don't recommend it for anyone unless they're advanced and they can recover from workouts that intense. And we only do it for brief periods of time when calories are increased and, you know, the recovery is going to be optimal from her not traveling and stuff and not doing a lot of shows. So that's uh, something that you can do. You know, you can make these improvement seasons really fun, um, you know, bursts of improvement in certain areas. You know, you can really hammer the shoulders for – Four weeks, six weeks, maybe eight if you can handle it. Shoulders, you can handle. Shoulders can handle a ton of um, a ton of volume, a ton of in intensity and frequency because they're a very active muscle group. So if you think about it, especially um, especially like the guys out there too, you're you know if you're doing chest, which she doesn't do, and you're doing back and you're doing shoulders, and any movement you do in upper body does incorporate some shoulder. Even bicep curls incorporates a little bit of shoulder, right? So. You're, they're so used to being used all the time and you use them when you're grabbing things and whatnot in your daily life that they recover at a very fast rate. So you can work them in higher frequency. They're a smaller muscle group and they just recover really well. So you can hammer them quite a bit uh, and, and get away with it for, for most of you. So, but this one in particular is a really, really hard workout and that's what she's going at it. And we're increasing calories. C cardio is decreased and this is... Oh, decreased cardio by big time. Oh, totally. Oh yeah. my goodness gracious. That is my favorite thing about taking this little mini break. I'm doing one BS cardio a week. <laughs> <laughs> BS cardio. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going quite as intense. It's one orange theory per week. <laughs> and that's it. And you know something? I, I don't necessarily hate cardio, but it is nice to have that extra time and not have to take like two showers a day. That's kind of nice. You know, I don't have to like rush to work or anything like that because I have to take a shower after cardio. And most importantly, I get to focus more on my lips. So here's the thing about me is I, if I don't do cardio before like 10 a.m., it's not happening. Mm -mm. I'm a morning cardio person. So what happens is um, I have to do cardio like first thing in the morning or my motivation for it just completely drops off. And in addition to that, I'm trying to work around my work schedule here too. So it definitely has to be done in the morning. And whenever you are doing cardio before your lifts, if you're like me and you like to do 
decent cardio, uh, you're likely to wear yourself out just a little bit before your lift. So you might not feel as strong or have as much energy as you would um, for your lifts. So now I feel like I can come into the weight room with a lot more energy knowing that I didn't have to do cardio and it's just like, oh, this is nice. So I like that. But with that being said, my knee is also really bad right now because whenever I was doing cardio, I was like walking to the gym. Um, that's a mile away from my house and I'd walk home. So I was getting in a few miles, some steps, but now it's so hot here in Vegas. It's hard to get the knee right now. It's so hot. Um, but uh, yeah, so the knee's down and also the cardio, which is not a bad thing for what we're trying to accomplish. And I think it's important to, um, like you mentioned, we're kind of uh, resensitizing my body to cardio. So if you want to get all science on us, yeah. why don't you explain what exactly that means? So what we're going to do here is go into, actually physically go into some of her um, check-ins. So uh, if you guys that are watching can see this graph, um, these are her check-ins. So just like, it's funny because people will sometimes say, oh, I want to, um, I don't want to work with an online coach or whatever. Like even Ashley like checks online because, and the reason that we do it online is even though she's here is that I need the data. So even though she's here, Anya's here, like everyone's here, Kimber's here, like we do their check-ins online because we need the data and we need the data first thing in the morning um, fasted weight measurements. So we do is we measure their waist, their hips, and their um, we get their weight, and then we get front and back pictures of them in the morning on the same day, the same time every week. And that's how we get we can start tracking data. So with Ashley's data, since she started, and it's cool. I can sh I don't mind showing you guys everything. You know, this is so she treats it like she's a normal, um, just like a normal client when she's in here. That's the only way it works. Um, but this is her dashboard of what she sees we have off season kind of <laughs> that's our that's our plan i currently. can't believe you made a big typo there and you called it off season oh, oh you're big, right that is it's a big it's just a typo it i is. know you okay, meant I'm gonna change it's just it. the fingers just slipped i understand i'm gonna I, get fired <laughs> <laughs> so well we just made this a thing today so. yeah <laughs> so so this is her actual menu plan of what she can eat and um everything that's you know that's how her, her menu plan is. So you, uh, I don't care if you guys see it. But um, the, the totals right now, so you guys can see in the off season, is 19, so she's doing 1,991 calories, 42 grams of fat, 224 carbs, 179 protein, which is overshooting on protein. Um, but it doesn't hurt her. We've checked her labs. It doesn't hurt her, her, her values or anything like that of her liver. So, um, and protein's more satiating too. So that is what it's at. Now, the problem is, is we've worked her up to these calories, and so we'll go into the issues that, of that. Now, you got to understand, what we got to look at what are we trying to do in the off-season. So the, the off-season, or the improvement season, <laughs> what we're trying to do here is a few things. So one, we're trying to reverse and correct anything that's happened metabolically from her dieting for a prolonged period, at least to some capacity, and get her metabolism revving up again, right? Because something weird was happening in the end last time, hopefully with some higher calories for a period of time, we can rev up her metabolism and do some correctional things, right? Um, the other thing is, and this is going to be for most of you out there, all, to be honest, almost almost all of you out there, um, when you diet really hard for longer periods of time, and there's periods of time where she does have to diet hard, for the most most part, she's pretty steady. But then a show will come around and she's a little behind or whatever, and we'll go hard for a week or so. Um, that could have some hormonal issues, you know, and when you start eating those calories again, getting your fats up again, your, your, your natural hormone production comes right back, right? Or you you try to get it right back. So that's another thing that you're going to want to pay attention to in the off season. Now, luckily we have a good team here and we always track everything, make sure she's staying healthy. And we, we track all the, all the things that are going on internally, you know, and then not just that, but like your, your liver, kidneys, uh, cholesterols, you know, estrogen, testosterone, growth hormone releases, like all these things that your body naturally does, we want to make sure that they're staying there so she can maintain being competitive without um, her body like just shutting down, you know. And when you diet hard for long periods, some people will really slow down hormonally. Um, for me, I mean, I've always been dieting my whole life and I was a little bit slowed when I checked it. I started checking it 10 years ago. And so I got corrected and now everything's um, good now. But that's something we're going to pay attention to, too. So as an advanced athlete, if you're not doing that yet, you should definitely do it. If you're one of our athletes, you know, shoot me a message. I'll give you our guys info um, so we can get you set up on that. It's relatively cheap, too. Um, but let's look at her stats. 
So when we look at her stats, these are basically um, them. So she started off with her doing her show as her first check-in as a baseline. And so every client will go through the same thing where we track all their measurements and whatnot. And we can see it like in real time. Um, she was 120, 34 on the hips, 23 on the waist on um, basically show day. I mean, it's... Yeah, that's like right before the show. Yeah. And then after the show, uh, the, the highest the weight got was to 126. So we started off, reloaded her, got her to 124 um, as a weight after the show, like a week after when we reloaded her, her weight got to 124. Her hips went up a half an inch and her waist went up 1.2 inches. Now... That's a little bit more than the waist would typically up, but she was having those weird things happening with her waist still at that point. Yeah, and also, too, if you want to mention that, like, sometimes when after a show, if you have foods that maybe you haven't had in a while, yeah. your body can do some weird things with the digestion. My digestion was horrible on that week, and it obviously affected <laughs> many numbers like you know what I'm saying yeah. so like I you know I can't even remember what I had it wasn't anything crazy but I definitely had some things that maybe I haven't had in a while that had gluten in it or dairy or I don't know um so that didn't help that didn't <laughs> you know so after a show sometimes it does happen not desirable but you know yeah and everyone you know when you have that peak week and you clean up your diet and we're doing like at the end that's something that we'll do is we'll we have a very special like systematic approach to getting the waistline smaller. That's something we've kind of fine tuned here for years. So just like what foods are easy digesting, what vegetables are going to be the right ones to go with, what um, types of proteins, what types of everything to get that waistline to just really, really get, get down there. Um, I would say that's like, if anything, like, I'm known for at least would be that part of it, that oh. getting that waistline to crazy. And I shall also mention too, that's a two week gap in between oh, okay. the June 15th and June 27th. Okay. So that one is, so 1.2. And then as her digestion started getting better, it went to 23.8. Makes a big difference. Yep. <laughs> 20, I mean, almost a half an inch almost. Um, went from 124 and then went up again, another one and a half pounds. It was great. Everything's going the right direction. Next week, 126, everything's going great again, another half a pound. It actually oh. rounds up because that was a 125.5. I could have sworn. Oh, yeah? I'll have yeah. to check that check-in. I don't know. It should be. It shouldn't, but okay. I don't know why. It, maybe I entered it in incorrectly. Uh, maybe it was 126. I don't know. Yeah, it should be. It was it probably 126. What yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, because that's 23.8 here. Okay, so I think okay. it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you just see a lot of check-ins. You do your own check-in. You probably see a lot. So. Um, so then, and then the waist measurement went up just slightly again. So we made another adjustment. We trended down because she started gaining um, a little bit in the waistline. So we trended the calories just a hair. And now they're up to, you know, the 1900 plus that we talked about. But the issue that she's having now is actually even eating all those calories, <laughs> right? Which I'm, yeah, <laughs> I have the opposite problem of most people. <laughs> I am not a I big a foodie. Peanut stomach. At this point, I am not a big <laughs> foodie. I don't have the biggest appetite, but I also I never want to like force feed myself either. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm I'm drinking so much water because, OK, this is you, funny. <laughs> you know, the starburst <laughs> packets, you know, they make the all pink packets. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? I see them. So at Walmart, they have the gallon sizes where you put one big stick into your gallon. And I've became addicted to those. And I'll have like two sometimes three gallons of that a day. <laughs> it's water, but it's like flavored water, but it's ma it's taking up space in my stomach because I'm drinking so much of it that it's like, I'm not even hungry by the end of the day. But also usually I'm more hungry in the morning and in the afternoon. And then by evening, I'm not really all that hungry. So even then sometimes I don't hit that number, but I was a lot better at, at, that this week though than previous so you know sometimes it won't be 1900 or so sometimes I'll you know want to go to sleep before my last meal and that's okay whatever but um it I'm definitely eating more than than in season and that's for sure in season though I should mention that even in season I wouldn't say I'm drastically low on calories no M maybe like what do I add? like 1200 you're at, you'll be at like 15 13 50 and yeah. then the last like week before the show before the peak week is like 12 so yeah so most of the time usually. maybe like 14 to 1500 on average but m that is because i maintain a lot yeah so it's kind of like a maintenance kind of thing um so even when i'm in season it's not like terribly low in calories thank goodness i'm not like one of those girls that go below a thousand doing hours of cardio that's not me um but um i'm definitely eating more so that's good. And um, 
I mean, in percentage wise, it's a third more calories than you're used to eating on yeah. a daily basis for most of your, because you compete so much. So it's like for most of your life, actually, yeah. you're eating like a third more. It's a lot volume wise. Yeah. It's i uh, I'm not built for this. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so. laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's definitely, I feel like for most people, when you like, they'll, they'll tend to go over in their off season. If anything, I'm going under a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so now we look at this check-in from today and we'll make adjustments because it looks like one of a few factors. So one, her body's probably revving up metabolically. Um, two, I need to do my part, which would be if she's not able to get all the calories and I need to find a solution to that and maybe use smaller, um, smaller volume, more calorie dense foods and not drink three gallons of water and not drink three gallons of water. <laughs> yeah, so, instead of, so in that scenario, maybe instead of doing, you know, 60 grams of carbs from rice, you can do one, you know, I don't even know the numbers off the top of my head, but like a tablespoon of add coconut oil or something like that, or MCT oil. She likes that uh, flax oil she likes. So we could do something like that to get the calories up without having the volume so great. So that's another, another option too. Um, so that's how, you know, we'll look at the off season, we'll go about it. And we're trying to do a few different things. One, the main goal, obviously build the shoulders up. The, I guess the second main goal would get some, get some like normalcy going with the body. So it's not going through these weird fluctuations, give it a break, see if that helps. Three would be reset and let the uh, body resensitize to cardio. Yes, that's what we were getting at when I passed you the question. I'm like, we just went off on the biggest tangent ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah on the cardio thing. You want to go cardio. into the, the reset? No, I passed it to you. Oh, Adam. you did? Oh, my bad. Okay. So the reset is this. Um, bodybuilding is... You can't like, be too good. You shouldn't be too good at cardio. Yeah, so bodybuilding <laughs> is progressive and it's adaptive, right? So... Think about, and I think about it too, is like, um, I use, a, I use this like blacksmith, um, kind of metaphor for it. So when you look at like a blacksmith and you know, the, they're hammering things all the time, they're working with their hands, they're, they're doing a lot of heavy work, right? The first day of work for that guy who's a blacksmith is a really hard day at work. But when you t look at a blacksmith who's been doing it for 10 years, it's like nothing. They can pick up the hammers and you see this with like construction workers and whatnot too. You know, uh, it was funny. There's this. I had this, this time, it was the funniest, the funniest thing. And it was like, it was like a perfect example of this. And I actually thought about it when it was happening. So when we were in, it was like 2018 and we were loading the mats into the contest prep center in, in Denver. Um, these mats, so you guys know those rubber, those rubber mats, if you've ever seen them, they're like four by six rubber mats are like three quarters of an inch thick. Those are probably the hardest things to move around ever. They're, they're a hundred pounds. Each one's a hundred pounds. But they're like floppy and they're big and they're awkward. And one side's four feet, the other side's six feet. It's like the it's a nightmare. And these gym owners buy a gym and they buy these mats. They're like, oh, just throw them down on the floor. It is the hardest thing. <laughs> it's the hardest, most awkward thing to do. Anyway, so it's this is a funny story. So uh, there's this little mover, right? This little little mover, dude. He's just like this guy. He's just this. I mean, he was 110 pounds probably. Like little Hispanic dude, and we're like, he was funny. He was joking with me. He was like making fun of me the whole time, right? He's like, "Yeah, big dude, this be easy for you. Help me out." I was like, "All right, I'll do it with you. It's good cardio, right?" And this guy, there's like six steps to get down into the gym. He was grabbing these mats, and he would he was running down the stairs with them, just throwing them on the floor, right? And then he would get three to four down before I would get one, and I was so frustrated. I was like, "How is this little guy? I'm like 90 pounds bigger than this guy, getting these mats down to the floor." three to four times as fast as me, right? It doesn't make any, he's laughing at me every time he comes up. He's like really messing with me, right? So like it's hurting my pride at this point. So I'm like, but then I realized, you know, it's the same type of thing. It's like a progressive overload, right? He does it every day. He's used to carrying things. He's just better at it. So he's, you know, that's, that's how this goes. So with cardio, I know that's a weird story, but it's funny. So with cardio, it's the same thing, right? If, if this, so I'm burning probably a lot more calories than that guy, because he's just, it's just like he's so efficient at it, right? I'm floppy, I'm awkward, I'm falling downstairs, like like literally, and I'm I'm just so unstable, I'm just so bad at it that I'm burning way more calories doing the same movement. Now maybe he made up for it because he's moving, he's doing so much more than me, <laughs> but if, per each one, I'm doing, I'm doing burning less calories or more calories. Mm -hmm. So same thing with cardio, right? You can become so good at cardio. You know, Ashley was doing five Orange Theory classes a week, six Orange Theory classes sometimes. Like she rare occasions, rare occasions. If I'm close to a show, yeah. So she's getting so good at it and so used to it. Her body's becoming so efficient at the same movements over and over again um, that she is an essentially just becoming hyper adapted to it, right? We, we want to turn her back into. Adam carrying mats down those stairs super awkwardly and and becoming less efficient at it, right? So resensitizing her to that movement. So um, 
that's going to be why we take breaks off cardio. That was a weird story to jump into for that. Just really, <laughs> but, but, but we're trying to resensitize her to that. We're trying to resensitize her to exercise at times by taking time off of the gym, things like that. So you can work up to such a high progression in bodybuilding and in cardio that you want to go through these things called deloads every once in a while or reset in cardio, just like you did. So yeah. off season goal, get the calories as high as we can without gaining body fat uh, or without gaining a significant amount of body fat cardio as low as possible without gaining a significant amount of body fat, work on the areas that need improvement and use that caloric deficit we create or caloric surplus we created from the getting the calories up to, to put it to good use, right? And take advantage of that time. And then hopefully that will in, in turn result in, in, in everything being instead of an off season, a very strategic planning of improvement season and, and getting the body resensitized to everything we need it to. Absolutely. And I think it's important to note that that doesn't, <laughs> That's not a good thing for lifts necessarily. That kind of just applies to cardio because it's not like it's a different uh, scenario. You know what I mean? Yeah. it's a, So, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, In terms of progressing to a certain point, I think that, you know, with, with bodybuilding and progression, you should be, you know, same type of thing where you're kind of progressing up to a certain point. But you can do that with weight. Yeah, you could. And then mm -hmm. exactly. So let's say you're, you're constantly progressing, progressing, progressing. This is kind of how like power lifters will do it. And they'll progress and they'll lift a little more weight, a little harder, a little more weight, a little harder. And then they'll get to their meat and then they'll have their meat and they'll take like a week off and do like a deload type of thing. And then go back to like that starting point of where they were. It's not always like 10, 10, 10. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be like a six weeks at like level 10 yeah. for her shoulders. And then we're going to go back to her regular shoulder workout type of thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. And I think I'm actually at six weeks yeah, this week. This week. Thank God. They last <laughs> forever. These workouts are long. Poor Sam. Poor Sam. Yeah. She trains with me and she doesn't even complain. <laughs> she will be in the gym for two hours, man. Yeah. These are long ones. Yeah. There's a lot of volume. So now we go back. She's like <laughs> double duty right now. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. So, but y yeah. So with the cardio, you know, like I mentioned, uh, for what we're trying to accomplish since we're not um, training for performance, we're training for physique and aesthetics. Since that is our scenario, uh, not a good idea to be too good at cardio because next thing you know it, you'll be doing hours upon hours because you're so adapted that that 30-minute uh, uh, cardio session is no longer challenging. You're not you're not um, burning the same amount of calories. It's too easy. Then you got to go to 45 and then to an hour and then an hour and a half and, and so on and so on. So, you know, it is a, uh, it's good to kind of back off cardio every once in a while. And I'm, I kind of like it, you know, I kind of yeah. like it's it. It's good for the mind too, you know, yeah. that's a, that's a whole other part of it where your cardio intensity will vary when you're doing the same thing over and over again. And you're just kind of getting through it versus, um, really thriving in it and really going after it, you know, Yeah. if you're just kind of going through the paces of cardio and that's I, people, I, I do think that's one of the reasons people don't get results too, is that they'll get to this stage of just kind of doing cardio. I don't think too many people have an issue going at weights hard, but a lot of people have an issue with going at cardio hard. Mm -hmm. And if, if everyone treated cardio, like they treat weights, uh, we would have a lot less plateaus for sure. Yeah. And so you're getting your mind right for it too, is a whole nother thing, you know? And, um, so with this here, again, these are Ashley's check-ins and just like everyone, you know, she does her check-ins online, um, gives us the real data. We can compare the pictures. We can pull them up, uh, looking at the areas of improvement that we need. And, um, and it just gives us everything, you know, all the data that we have. And we can look back and say, remember that one week where uh, your waistline was, what did we do that week? Like, remember that week we had a lot of calories or if Ashley has doubts and she's like, I don't know, I think these calories are too high. Like, well, let's look at weeks, you know, three through seven, your calories were here and they, you weren't, you weren't, you know, too soft. Like, why not try this? You know? So it just gives us a lot of data to use. And uh, I really like the, the data collection. And that's what a bodybuilding is, is just collecting data and analyzing data constantly um, to know what the next level of um, uh, progression you need to make. So um, this is basically, you know, basically how it looks. So, um, Ashley, you do have the most colorful check-ins, I will say that. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I do them here at the gym, you know. Um, Sometimes we'll get bows and, like, yeah, just always matching. Yeah, the bows, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you'll get one where I'm just looking like poo-poo. For the most part, I'm like, what is Ashley's check-in going to look like today? Is it fluorescent green? I'm just going to randomly <laughs> trick you one day and just put somebody else's picture in there and see. <laughs> Just see the head cut off and just see yeah, if Yeah, see if you notice. That's funny. Know. I've had, you know what's funny is because I do the coaching online, I will have uh, occasionally, I'll have a girl that'll be checking. I've had it happen one, only once, I guess just to say, where a girl, she checked in like for like six months and then I 
saw her in person, but I didn't, I didn't recognize her. Oh. And she was like, you, I can't believe we went to her six months. You don't recognize me. And I'm like, and I was like, you don't check in with your face. You oh. cut your head <laughs> off at every face. That's not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah. I was like, I was, I thought about it. But I was like, how do I not after this long? Like, how do I not? I was like, oh, I know who you are. You don't check in with your face. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Like I was like, a, I was like, a, I felt so bad for it too. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So what are you, any anything else on on this before I close this part? Yeah. Of it so yeah. I think a good um, thing to mention, and you're really good at explaining this. So I'm gonna again pass it to you. So I know we've in the past mentioned like you don't necessarily need to put on weight to put on muscle. That's not really what we're doing necessarily. We're increasing calories for other reasons, but that's not what we're actually trying to do. So basically I think the biggest difference between my in season and when I'm competing so frequently is like, I have the time um, and energy to now like really focus on lifts. Whereas like when I do a show to show scenario, I, I, you know, we've complained on here before how I, I just don't get the same amount of lifts and I don't get the same intensity, especially like if I'm going, um, you know, to the East coast or whatever, I'm not getting that same same amount of lifts. If I'm doing peak weeks, I'm I'm lifting like half the time just because of the travel, the peak week schedule itself, jet lag, and everything that comes with it. Because when you are, you know, training and you're about to compete, you train a little differently than you would when you're not. So it's kind of like, you know, yeah. so you can explain. Yeah, so – as far as the so as far as the workouts going, we'll go into the workout part of it. When she's going through a, a show scenario, most of the time she's working out about eighty percent intensity, trying to decrease that inflammation, let the body rest, recover, so she can look fully rested, look tight, let that let that body's um, water retention decrease. And she's usually doing circuits for like three days before the shows, and then the Thursday before the show, she'll uh, well actually the Friday before the show. A lot of times we won't work out at all. Sometimes we'll do shoulders just to give her a little bit, maybe even um, get her a little bit rounder in the shoulders, a little bit of inflammation, right? But sometimes there's no workout at all. So there's a lot of times missed. So you have Friday off, Saturday off, Sunday, sometimes a travel day. So you're missing three days of a workout going into shows on uh, on that part of it. So that's kind of the strategic part of that. So doing a lot of shows, you're also just taking a lot of time from working out, which accumulates, especially when you're doing three shows in, in three weeks sometimes. You know, we're talking nine days of not working out. And then on the rest of the days are 80% intensity. So, of course, you can't can't maintain that. Now, when we talk about the off-season and trying to build lean mass, which is what we're talking about, and staying lean, we have to look at, okay, how much muscle can Ashley build in the most perfect circumstance? In the most perfect circumstance, realistically, with her being, you know, 125 pounds, very advanced lifter, it's not going to be that much muscle. I think in a perfect year, if everything was lined up right, maybe four pounds of lean mass, maybe five if she really crushed it that year. But realistically, like with her doing shows on top of that, probably like three. I would say that's probably like the realistic amount of muscles someone like Ashley is going to build. And we're not talking, you know, she's not getting newbie gains. We're not going to be getting any newbie gains. She's been lifting, um, you know, pretty hard since you did track, since you're like 14 or so, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after you reach that like fourth year, fifth year of lifting, your gains are going to be pretty, if you've been doing it right, you've been doing it hard and consistent for those like four or five years, your gains are going to be pretty minimal. Um, best case scenarios, there was one, I, I can reference one study, which basically looked at how much muscle someone can build in uh, how much a, like a regular person could build. And it was 10 grams. So actual skeletal muscle synthesized amino acids into skeletal muscle, 10 grams per day of of actual skeletal muscle, right? So 10 grams, it's 450 grams for a pound. So that's 45 days would be one pound. And I, I don't know the reference of how big those people were in the study. Usually, you know, average weight of like 150 pounds is like a pretty pretty typical thing, but I have to, I'd have to look back to see that. So you're probably even less than 10 grams. So if we're talking best case scenario, 45 days, one pound of skeletal muscle. Now we're not talking pure lean mass because water counts as lean mass. Um, you know, we have to be smart with, okay, does it make sense to gain one pound, one and a half pounds every single week if I'm only going to gain one pound of lean mass every six weeks? It doesn't make sense because then you're going to be dieting at six pounds of fat to one pound of lean mass. That doesn't make sense to me. So if we're going to try to target one to two pounds of fat mass to one pound of lean mass gain, and then it becomes a lot better of a trade. 
you know, what I don't like with seeing people in the off season is them gaining ever. So what I like to look at is, okay, are you gaining a week of dieting for every week of gaining lean mass? If you're gaining one week to one week, I don't think it makes sense. I think it should be one week of dieting gained for every four weeks of lean mass gain. So that, that way we're not adding in. And if you do that one week per one week, then you're doing six months of dieting throughout the year and six months of gaining throughout the year. And you're not really getting ahead with, if you go a more strategic route, maybe you're going three months of dieting throughout the year and nine months of gaining or nine months of like Ashley does, which is um, getting ready for shows, but it's not really dieting that hard. It's like 1500 calories or so for someone who's 125 pounds. It's not that low. So um, I guess that is a long way of explaining it. Yeah. yeah okay. But it was very good. Well, thanks. And, um, you're good <laughs> at what you do. Hey. Hey. hey you know, would you look at that? Hey. Would you look at that? You know what? Uh, I love doing these. Po- this is, I'm off topic right now. I just took a bad segue. But <laughs> we had a, you know what? We had a, uh, I just remember, you said you're good at what you do. Whatever. Mm-hmm. People, it's funny. Whenever you're there somewhere and I'm not there, they're like, oh, where's Ashley? Whatever. I'm somewhere. You're not there. Like, they're, all right. They say, where's Adam? They say, where's Ashley? But we were at the Masters Nationals. I was at Masters Nationals this weekend in Pittsburgh. And I just want to say thanks to you guys because you guys were so nice. I, I love the Masters competitors. They're awesome. I want to, I want to do, I want to work with more Masters. I love working with the Masters competitors. They're, so fun and so thankful and so happy and the, the attitude was great backstage. Like everyone was just having a good time, you know? And um, they're just so many people came up and were just like, say, I listen to your podcast, whatever. Like, where's Ashley? <laughs> it's like, it's like, I think it was just such a great thing. So thank you guys for watching. I know it was a bad segue and timing of that, but it uh, you just reminded me of that. So yeah, totally. Yeah. But, you know, I um, I will say I'm, I'm pleasantly, I'm pleasantly surprised by, um, how this off season is going. I thought I would be getting FOMO worse than I, than I am. I mean, I'm getting it bad, but <laughs> I thought I was just going to get bored, but you know, I've been keeping myself pretty busy doing photo shoots and making content. Cause now that I have time, um, I like the way my cheeks look too. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, my face cheeks, they look much better. You know, you must They're mean just, your other cheeks too. Yeah. but <laughs> I, I like. I actually like my body leaner. Yeah. I like sharpness. I don't know. It's, like, eh, more impressive. I, I know some girls like to be, like, a little bit softer. I know guys definitely like You know like what's it. funny? I think that it's the same. Everyone, like, so girls like themselves being leaner. Guys like themselves being leaner. But girls like guys being softer and guys like girls being softer. What's isn't up with that? Isn't that something? Isn't that the weirdest isn't thing? Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. Because is it the same for you? Do you like a guy to be a little softer I than, like, hard as rock? Or no, what? I don't mind that. Okay. I don't mind it. Um... But also, I don't think they, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, oh, my gosh, super, super lean. I love it. I'm just, there's, like, a, there's a, a range. Okay. <laughs> um, it's definitely, that range ends way before dad bod does. <laughs> yeah, um, so, for sure. I don't know, body <laughs> fat percentage-wise, but we're not getting dad bod. Yeah. Or not, not what I would want, but. You know, it's, it's so funny. You hear that as such a consistent thing. I just, I just bring that up because girls, I think girls think like they, they're always down on themselves. They gain a little bit of body fat, yeah. but in terms of like raw attraction, like opposite sex, most guys like a girl, a little softer, like yeah. not in season craziness. Oh you know? yeah. I think like I find probably that to be super consistent. 90% of guys that prefer the off season look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't for myself. I like to feel a little sharper. I like to be sharper. Yeah. And um, you said you like to feel aerodynamic. Air di- and efficient <laughs> and agile, which I, I still do. Like I'm, I'm all improvement seasoned, but um, I, I'm still, I still feel lean. <laughs> honestly, um, I think I'm yeah, you'll have your days well. where you come in here. You're like, I'm feeling pretty lean. Yeah. yeah. And you're up. I uh, mean, I'm just, a little, I'm just, my, my lines are a little bit blurry. Yeah. So, but you're it, doing good. Off season, I think it's a good. For people to see, okay, an advanced athlete who's very serious. And I think that that needs to be a differentiating marker of um, level of intensity and seriousness and, and care, right? Yeah. Because you would be a 10 out of 10 out of all those things, like level of seriousness, level of dedication, um, you know, effort that you're trying to, what you're trying to accomplish. Like everything is guns blazing, 10 out of 10 intensity, 10 out of 10 care and all that. Um, and you have to be honest with yourself too, if you're that person or not. Cause I get a lot of people who say that they're going to be a 10 out of 10 intensity. I want it so bad. No, no, no. I want it so bad. I'm like, I don't care what you say. I want to see it in your actions. If your, your check-ins will tell me how much you care, you know? And with you, um, 
you've been, you know, you care a lot and you do it, you're going after it and you're really trying to make these improvements and it's what you love to do. And, you know, there's nothing that's going to get, get you away from that. Um, but you could see, okay, she's six weeks off season. She's six, roughly six, well, actually now Less like than. four pounds, four <laughs> pounds above stage weight. Yeah. Um, but that's not with, and everyone's like, oh, it's too low. Like it's so lean. Like don't say it's too lean or don't say it's unhealthy if we're doing everything right, you know, we're checking the labs, we're checking where the calories are up to 2000 for a 120 pound girl. She's not doing any cardio. It's not like I would get the argument. Oh, four pounds is not enough post show. Correct. I would agree with most people. And that would look at the scenario. If the coach was saying, or you were doing, um, you know, if like, she's still doing an hour and a half of cardio, she's eating a thousand calories still. And then she's only at four pounds. Yeah, that would be not healthy, but Hey, if, if it's working out that way, <laughs> and you're up and you're doing everything right and everything checks out, then yeah, great. You know, that's a great, but that just shows the level of, 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 you know, dedication it also shows too. And there's a difference too that I think people will also need to differentiate. She's not so depleted going into a show where she's gaining 10 pounds right away yeah. after mm -hmm. because she's not doing things that a lot of people do. She's not doing anything like cr cutting water and, and those things that, you know, taking pills to cut water or going through these crazy peak weeks where she's depleting everything down and she's so depleted when she gets on stage that she instantly gains 10 pounds the next day. Like she put on four pounds in two weeks after the show, you know, it wasn't anything unrealistic. So that's another factor. So yeah, you might gain a lot more weight post-show because you're maybe the approach you're taking, you're depleted down so far that you kind of have to, yeah. you know? Um, but so it's, it's going to be different. That's going to be another factor too. I think we need to talk about yeah. just that part of it because you're not going out having a bunch of crazy cheat meals right. and things like that too. And so, you know, if you're a level, let's say your off season serious level is a seven out of 10, maybe you're going to be up, you know, eight, nine pounds. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. Um, some people will be perfect and be up eight, nine pounds. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think just being, keeping it realistic, you know, yeah. keeping it within striking distance is important. So yeah, totally. And, and it's something to note too. It's like, I'm not like, it's not like I've been doing this for, um, months like we're talking about six weeks so yeah. i would say like if if it's been six weeks and you're already up 15 pounds it's a problem yeah um so you know i think like sometimes even we need to be careful how we word it too is like you know rule of thumb maybe 10 pounds for most girls to you know obviously how tall you are and everything else comes into play but just let's say for the sake of the argument 10 pounds is should be your limit limit for off season. Now, did it take you 10 weeks to put on the 10 pounds or did you get 10 pounds in two weeks? Cause that's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. You shouldn't do that. That's no, no, no. So more gradually, if you put on a little bit of weight, that's better and more ideal than just, okay, I used up my 10 pound limit all at once here in these two weeks. That's bad. That's, that's bad. Gosh, it's rough. Yeah. And we should probably go into it a little bit. Cause I, I run into, here's the issue that you're going to run into when you do that. And it's, and I will say the different scenario is based on how you have to approach the, the prep. So there are some scenarios, be it rare, where you will get someone super depleted down because maybe she's like, maybe you're really, really muscular and you're like on the verge of being figure and we have to deplete you down to get you on a bikini stage. Mm. In that scenario, okay, yeah, 10 pounds the week after the show because you're just filled out now again, that's one thing, right? But there's a pretty big difference. And you guys know if you're that person or not. Like you would know going into it, maybe the approach you're taking, like there's a lot of coaches that are more aggressive, like in Brazil and stuff too, um, that are having, like they use more cutting water protocols and things like that. And so you'll run into that big, low, low weight drop. Yeah. Getting rehydrated is a good thing. You maybe you will be up eight pounds right away. Right. But then after that, we're talking body fat and you guys can tell the difference. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. we're talking about here, but the, here's where you run into the issue. This is where I run into the issue and I run into it from at the amateur level to the pro level, and it becomes really, really hard. Okay. So usually the harder, how do I explain this? So in the off season, the people that kind of fluff up too big usually have to diet harder going into a show. All right. So you take someone who had a bad off season originally, right? Maybe they went up 12, 15 pounds more than they should have. Then they diet down, get ready for a show. They chase the last physique. Hopefully they get back to the physique that was their best physique. Usually it's a little bit off than where they could have been if they just had a better off season. And then what happens is they're like, okay, I'm going to do good. I'm going to do it. And then they do it again, right? They fluff up. But then what happens is they fluff up so quickly, they didn't give themselves a lot of time to go through the correctional period that you're kind of going through too, right? 
So you're going through this six weeks of correction. At this point, a lot of times people are about gained so much weight at six weeks that they're like, I just hate how I feel right now. I want to diet down. I want to get it. So you went through a really hard diet because of how you did your first off season. Now you fluffed up again and your body hasn't completely corrected itself. And now you want to diet again right away. And then you're expecting the same response as you had the first time you started dieting ever. Good luck with that. It's not, it's not how it's going to go. Every time you do that, the, the, the longer, the shorter period of time you have with those, getting those higher calories in you, the faster, the harder it's going to get the next time for you to diet. I don't know the reasoning for this. I don't know the scientific reason or if there even is one or if they can even come to a conclusion on that. All I can tell you is I've worked with thousands of athletes over my 20 years of this, 20, gosh, 22. Um, and it's just a consistent, it's a consistent thing. And I think that's what burns people out the most out of the industry is like, mm-hmm. They're like, oh, my diet, my body just stopped working for me and it just didn't work anymore. And, you know, it just got so hard at the end. And I'm like, no, you never had a good off season. Like your off seasons at best were like 60% good, you know? Yeah. And then now every time you diet, you're not getting the same response. And now mm-hmm. it's so hard. It's not worth it. And I get that. But don't say it was, it was the bodybuilding that did it. It was your lack of adherence in between shows that did it. Right. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's unfortunate. And I just, it's, it's something that like, I'm kind of like villainized for saying because I say it out loud and people don't want to hear it you know because it's rough to hear if you're that girl I wouldn't want to hear it if I was that girl you know it took me a couple it took me a couple years to get the hang of that but you know Mm -hmm. it's the truth it is the truth sometimes you know totally yeah sometimes I think I think sometimes like the the competitors will will think like okay if I do get this limit I'm you know as long as I'm I'm not exceeding 10 pounds and I'm good and it's like, well, you already used it up. That's not good unless it's like one of those scenarios that you mentioned. Like if you come in, you're already way too depleted to begin with or too lean or whatever the case is. But I find that most of the time when this happens, it's for from people that were never lean enough to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, just because their habits are, are making it tough for them to get lean because of the yo-yo cycle that you just mentioned. Yeah. So it's kind of like a... You'll never really truly make improvements unless your improvement season is on point. Yeah, I think that that's a huge thing. And uh, I think it's important, you know, and I think that that's something that we've we've been luckily we talk about it so much. Our athletes are a little bit more along lines with that. Yeah, we're always going to every anyone's going to get some and everyone has to go through that learning curve. And I never get like we'll bash on anyone for doing it because it's just part of it. I think sometimes people just have to go through it and learn it and they have to value it. You know, they have to like feel that. And then after they do it, they'll either go one of two ways. They'll be like, okay, I'm going to do better this time. And they actually do it or they just keep repeating, you know? Yeah. But, um, totally. yeah, so it's, I'm glad that you're, that's the one thing I really love about you being like the, 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 you know, on this podcast with us is that you get to create, you create a really good example of, of what to do and you show, Hey, you know what? I've done this for years, but I've done it right. And I've never gone too low in calories and too high in cardio. Yeah. So yeah, you're not seeing me bounce up in the mm-hmm. off season. And I am watching my diet in the off season. Maybe you're a little crazy with not having cheat meals ever, right? That I can, we could agree on that. You never have any, but uh, but I have I cheat snacks. You sometimes. cheat snacks though, right? Snacks. And, I'm a snacker. But snacker. you're also that's what it takes to be great at anything is is uh, is, is sacrifice. If you think these like guys who are you know fighting MMA at the highest levels aren't sacrificing, or you think these guys that are doing Olympic sports you know, aren't sacrificing in other ways to be the best. Like you're out of your mind. If you think you're just going to crawl into this and be, you know, top three in the world, <laughs> yeah. know, it's like, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. So you gotta, you know, your, your actions have to match your goals. And I love how you're doing this like off season and showing people, yeah, in the off season, there's a way to do this too. And, um, and you're, you're doing great, really great. You're doing a great job, Ashley. Thank you. Yeah, well, you're doing you know, good. I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah. I, um, I'm really trying to keep it together, you know. I do have, like, a little fear inside my head all the time. Like, I never want to go back to that one year that I gained, like, all that weight. And it was so hard to get off. Because even you talking about the girls that, like, yo-yo in between in-season and off-season so drastically, I'm just like, man, I just brings me back memories of how hard that is to get off. Yeah. It is so hard. It's not even worth it. To me, it's not worth it. It really that isn't. Was rough. I just... You know, so I always try to remember that any time I, I really need to keep myself in check. And I think a great way to hold yourself accountable is doing the check-ins, you know? Like, you take a look at me every week, and I check in, and we make sure, like, you know, sometimes the weight's going to fluctuate for whatever reason. It could be even that, like, I didn't pee yet. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anything. But as long as it's kind of we're keeping it in check and we can see visually, okay, well, the measurements are the same this week. The weight went up a little bit, but the measurements are the same or vice versa. So the body isn't going to be super consistent all the time, and you're not going to see these 
perfect steps where you're phasing out of in season and into the improvement season or whatever. But just keeping yourself in check, I think, is super important. And having that second set of eyes to make sure, okay, we're where we need to be because, you know, you know how competitors are. Sometimes yeah. they skip check-ins and stuff, and they don't want to look at their physique and have the measurements, and they don't want to weigh themselves or whatever. And next thing you know, they went way overboard because they weren't holding themselves accountable, and they're just making guesstimates. Yeah, I do like that. I think that part is one of the better parts of doing the check-ins is because you have to do your measurements and you have to face that. You have to face that reality of did I do good this week or yeah. did I not, you know? And and stepping on that scale is a it's a very powerful tool. Very yeah, a power, it that is. and the measure. I like the measurements more. Yeah, because the weight can be a little fluctuating, deceiving sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, and you you girls have it the worst because you when you have your period and stuff. Yeah, that like can that. affect the waist measurement too. Yeah, but I, I have um, I have some that will get like five to six pounds and I'm like. Man, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you lose, like, that whole week of data. When, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like you don't know what happened, what's going yeah. on in there. Um, but it's it's nice just to have a visual peek and see, like, okay, are we on track? Are yeah. we not? And, I know, you know, what's hard for me, too, is in the wintertime doing it when I just don't want – I'm in my comfy sweats, and I just don't want to get in a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to do it anyway. Um, so, you know, I've been making a habit of it. Just Monday mornings, I try to come in before work and – do my check-ins and stuff like that. So well, the good thing been, is too is sometimes you'll get a surprise one, and it's like yeah. it'll surprise you. And you're like, oh, I was surprised cool. my weight was this low this week. But yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I was traveling. Um, like Kimber had a good one yesterday, and she was like super stoked, and it was nice because it like made the mood so much better too, yeah. right? So she was like, because we got back from Pittsburgh, and she checked in, and she, we didn't eat like as I perfectly as possible out there because we're traveling and whatnot. And um, she's like, hey. I lost weight this week and I, my, my waist is dead. Like it's like, so it has that part of it too, has the reward. It also has the, the suffer, yeah. <laughs> but it has the reward system too. And you're like, all of a sudden it's like, Hey, that's cool. Right. So, um, there's that part of it too. The accountability, the, the kind of the reward if I had a good week. Yeah. Right. And then there's the kind of the, the almost like a self, um, like, like, I don't know, you kind of get in trouble with yourself when you don't have a good week. You're like, okay, I was a jerk last week. I need to get this right. Like you yeah. almost have that talk with yourself and you know, it is nice, you know? And so. I think sometimes it can be a little frustrating too. If like the athlete knows that like, Hey, I was actually good this week and mm. I'm not seeing improvements or went up and you know, sometimes the body does weird things and you can't control it. Sometimes <laughs> it does like you're stressed or cortisol's high, whatever you maybe your digestion's off. Who knows? Sometimes you will have those weeks, but I think it's important to be honest with yourself. Like, did you actually stick to the plan? Or yeah. are you just making excuses why you didn't hit the numbers? So it's, it's, although you are checking in with your coach and stuff, it's important to be honest with yourself because your coach can't make the proper um, adjustments to your plan unless they know, like, is this because you are on your period or is this because you had two bags of potato chips or something? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're just setting yourself up for failure if you're not honest. Yeah, the data, it's all data collection. And then you have to ask yourself, you know, did I work out with the right intensity? Is yes. my mood the right way? Is mm -hmm. my sleep the right way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many factors. I wish it was so linear and black yeah. and white. Oh, that'd be mm -hmm. so nice. Yeah, I'll, you know, even me, you know, I've done this at a, uh, I guess you'd say at a high level for a very long time. I'll have some people just come in, you know, once a year, twice a year, just someone that just doesn't click. And I'm like, we're doing everything right, you know? And those things are, they're, they're few and far in between. You really have to just eliminate everything, you know? Then I'll, I'll go to the hormones and make sure they get their hormones tested. And then I'll like, okay, you know what, maybe this week work out with, with someone and make sure your intensity is there or make sure, you know, your cardio is like, what that, check all these boxes and then you go to foods and it's like, it becomes a difficult thing. So, um, yeah, it's never going to be a linear thing. So don't, don't beat yourself up too bad about it. You know, if it's, if you start trending the wrong direction for weeks on end, then yeah. Yeah. Then but, that's something to yeah. really look into. But. So, uh, anyway, with that, we're, we're a little over an hour in. Uh, this is Wee. fun. We could probably talk about this for a while. This I is a fun know, one. Oh, I know. But do we have any, so any of you guys watching on Instagram, you have any last minute questions you'd like to ask that might help everyone else? If so, now be the time. But otherwise, for everyone listening, yeah, on you better answer now. This this phone's about to die. It looks <laughs> yeah, like it is here. actually. But so. anyone, everyone else listening on the podcast, just listening, thank you guys so much. Um, Ashley is going to be doing a video. Uh, we're going to be doing yeah. a check-in video type so of scenario. So we'll have more visuals too. So uh, we understand our podcast. Uh, listeners are listening for the most part unless you're on the YouTube so I think it would be nice to have more visuals so we'll kind of go more in depth onto some things and have photos and live check-in and everything on my thing so maybe maybe get that out in a few yeah, weeks or on your YouTube so. is it depending your, on how 
How busy are they? <laughs> is your YouTube uh, youtube.com forward slash Ashley K Feet? <laughs> Ashley K Fit. <laughs> Okay, we have this joke. We say that we say Ashley K feet like joking around all the time. Jo- it's a joke. Okay, because I always <laughs> Just say it on I say like my best feature legit is my feet. I have really pretty feet, and I don't I don't like to mention that because I don't want the creeps. But my feet, like they could be, I could have feet. I could be a foot model. I'm, I'm not right kidding now. you. I'm not. I, they're beautiful. They are stunning feet. It's like the best thing I have going for me. Um, but they're always hidden in the shoe. That <laughs> they're always hidden. How in did the we shoe. get here? How did uh, we get here? So the joke is like, if, <laughs> if this fitness career doesn't work out, I could be like a foot person. <laughs> I would never do it. But did the joke would be I would be Ashley K. Feet. <laughs> so funny. So that's where that comes from. But I bet is it so? Is it YouTube.com Sla- slash? slash Ashley Coltwasser? Oh, Ashley Coltwasser. Okay, and I should change Ashley Fit because no one knows how to spell my last name. Yeah, but it's funny. If you ty- type in some letters resembling Ashley Coltwasser in some fashion, it'll probably pop. up. Okay, and then uh, mine's forward slash Team Elite Physique. So YouTube.com forward slash Team Elite Physique, and then we'll have you know videos of Ashley. We'll have that workout on there, and um, just other things there too. And is there anything else on that? No? Okay. Well, for you guys listening. Give us on suggestions the po- what you want to hear, guys. Yeah. For you guys listening on the podcast, we'll end it here. And thank you guys so much for listening. And for the questions that we have on Instagram, um, we always do this around noon on Monday. Today's a little bit later. If you guys ever want to tune in, do that. Uh, we'll be on live on my Instagram. And thank you guys so much for listening. So let's go ahead and get in these questions real quick, though. Okay, one is, all right, it's not a question. <laughs> it says, this time uh, this time last year, I was in my best shape and weight for competition, and today I've gained 30 pounds, 30 pounds a year, and I'm trying to get my mindset back. If you are, so again, when we say 10 pounds, we're talking percentages. It looks like this is a guy's picture, so that might be right for you. We're talking percentage. If you take a whole year off, I'll generally say around 12% above stage weight is, is realistic. So maybe if if you're 200 pounds and you're 12% above stage weight, that's like 24 pounds, right? So it's not terrible if that's a scenario. If you're a female and you're 125 pounds on stage, that might be a little much. Um, that would I would say that's past the point where you should be. Uh, if you're a bikini competitor. Now, if you're a woman's bodybuilder, it might be different. All right. Um, how do you tell the difference between fat gain, water gain during the off season? That's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. So your... Um, that's a, actually, that's a kind of a technical thing, but your water weight gain will fluctuate a little bit, but it'll mainly fluctuate because of different foods that you're eating, your stress and the foods that you're eating. So there's a hormone, um, called aldosterone that your body produces basically, which will regulate water retention, um, based on your sodium consumption. So if you're like, if you're like Ashley and you're eating pretty clean all the time, you're not going to have too much of that fluctuation. Besides time of lack of sleep, cortisol elevation, really hard workouts that are different than her normal workout. So let's say one day she crushed it in the weight room and she doesn't normally do that. She might have more water retention that way. Uh, lack of sleep, I already said. Um, eating, and then one day Ashley goes and she eats like some crazy salty fries, right? Something that she hasn't been doing. Drinking five jars of pickle juice. There we go. She does drink pickle juice. <laughs> so that could cause a spike in... Um, when you have a, a giant influx in sodium, that will cause water retention, but sodium itself doesn't cause water retention only when it's past your norm. So if Ashley's always eating the same amount of sodium and it's, let's say, um, whatever, she eats the same amount of sodium, but then for, for three weeks, she's not going to have generally any sodium-based water fluctuations. But then that one day she has that big meal, she's going to have one. And so that would be that. So if you're being consistent and you're eating clean and you're doing these things regularly, and that's why I'm a big fan of eating clean, because we're going to have predictable uh, outcomes every single day. You're going to have a very repeatable physique on a daily, and you're going to be easy to collect data. Now, if you're doing, like, let's say, macro dieting, and you're eating a bunch of sodium and whatnot all the time, and you're trying to check in with your coach, your coach is not going to have great data to work off of because you're having those fluctuations. Your waist is bigger one day. Your water retention is greater one day. How is he going to make the proper adjustments uh, without that consistency? So the more consistent your diet, the less of that you're going to have. That's going to be probably the best way of doing it. But it's going to be hard to, to differentiate between the two. 
you shouldn't have a giant increase in water retention unless, of course, we talked about that earlier scenario, you're extremely depleted going into a show, maybe cutting water, taking diuretics, whatever. Uh, you shouldn't have like a huge increase of water retention. So there you go. Um, okay, any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Nope, I guess that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. We will talk to you later. Bye.